So in this section, we'll examine the forecasting methods under time series uh, one at a time. First thing is the last value method or the naive method, right? The last value method or the naive method. The name is naive, but it's not that simplistic uh, in terms of its ability to tell the future. Well, what does it involve? Very simple. As his name suggests, just copy the last value. So if we have this data series, right? Uh, what you do is the next forecast is a copy of the most recent data. That means our X of T, our present data. So our present data at time six, our T is six, our present present presence data, uh, the most recent data is 1350, right? So we'll copy and paste it, and that becomes our next forecast. Our next forecast F7 before X7 arrives. Keep that in mind. Huh? X7 is something we don't know yet, but we, are, we very much want to know. So we come up with F7. Our best guess is that it is X7. All right, X7 is going to be the same as 1350. We say that in time six, in time six, present now, right? Before time seven arrives. So this is how we do it. That's it. Very simple. Last value. Just copy the last data and say that it is our forecast for the immediate future, F7. All right. So in terms of calculation, very simple. Let's look at the diagram here. Um, so what is forecasting method? Uh, very simple. What it says is, this is our latest known data and our next forecast, very simple. Just copy and paste it here. All right, so this is our next forecast. And maybe data comes in later, is here or here or here somewhere, doesn't matter. But we are going to stick our neck out and say that the data is going to be here. All right, so this is what it does. Then the question is, okay, I know how to calculate. Uh, is it useful and what is it used for, right? So naive method, last value method is not just as a beginning uh, method for us to discuss in uh, academic setting. It is actually useful uh, in a way that will be quite uh, handy when the data is highly fluctuating. So what do you mean by when the data is highly fluctuating? Um, let's come back to our drawing board, right? So when the data is highly fluctuating, it might be going up and up and down, and it is just uh, unpredictable in some sense, right? Uh, for example, during the Lehman Brothers financial crisis, or maybe during the initial days of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, there's some sort of unpredictability implicit in the way the data goes, right? Because of all these externalities. And then there's some recovery. And the moment you think it is recovering, it drops further again, right? And, and there is no prediction because policy might change, countermeasures might be implemented. And so very hard to predict when things will happen. When this comes, this is, this is the kind of highly fluctuating data that we are talking about. Okay. Uh, what is the best way to forecast? Well, if you try to use past data, the more past data you have, the worse it becomes. Yeah, because situation is developing anew and there is no precedence to rely on. So relying on past data means relying on precedence and it can be very wrong. So if you look at the trend, it is saying that the whole market is crashing. But uh, is that going to be the case? You know, is it going to go towards zero or even negative territory? Again, doesn't sound quite right, right? So what's the best way to forecast in this situation? The way it goes is this. If you use the last value method, this 
naive method. Uh, the assumption is that situation is developing anew and every new time instant is a new case. The best approximation to the nearest future is perhaps the immediate past. Does it make sense? Right, the best approximation to the immediate future for a very, very unpredictable future is the immediate past. Yeah. Uh, if you use a lot of past past uh, data, then it doesn't tell you the real story, right? The, the closest to the immediate future is the immediate past. So at the drawing board here, if we are to forecast, then we say, let's forecast this. Then we are wrong, right? Because of the vertical difference. Then we say, okay, fine, because it's a new situation. We'll forecast here because of we are using the immediate past data, the X here. And then we are wrong. And so we say, okay, we forecast here. And then we realize that we are so wrong, right? So you start to wonder, is it any good that we actually use naive method? The, the, the issue or the problem is that it is not better to use other methods anyways. Furthermore, it is harder to explain the why. And I don't mean explaining to yourself. Because when I explain to you, you can try to understand or because you're learning, you want to understand, you want to accept it. But if you're explaining to your suspicious customer, your suspicious boss, who might think, ah, are you any good at doing this? Then you need a way that is logically sound. Right. So, yes, there is always going to be some sort of uh, upsetting situation where your forecast is way wrong and then you're going to forecast here and because situation develops or worsens further, then you're way wrong again. But if you have taken any other averaging methods, they would have put your forecast to some higher levels because more data in the past were at higher values. So it would have been even worse. You see, and again, the logic is that our assumption is the in this fluctuating uh, future, the immediate future is best approximated by the immediate past. Yeah. So if we keep doing that, we find that we are tracking. All right. We are tracking the situation as the situation develops. We are following it, not so badly, right? Not so badly, and very hugging very close to the immediate past. You can see that the green dots show up as another kind of a shifted x dots not too far into the future right so that is the logic behind using the uh, this method so it's not about the simplicity of the formula or whatever uh, it is more about uh, having such a situation where the data is highly fluctuating so so they highly fluctuating data we use the naive method or the last value method. <laughs> okay, so uh, in this case, we end up having an easy time to do calculations, but that is not the point because a lot of times we can use computer software and all that. So it's not about the complexity of the formula, but rather what is our assumption, our posture about the, the terrain of the data. If it's highly undulating, last value method. Okay.